Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at how to determine the slope of a line from a graph. But before we start with points, lines, and coordinate planes, let's first look at some real-life examples of slopes. Here we see a lovely green hill, and here we see the slope of the hill with respect to the ground. Here we see a very steep mountain, and in red we can see the slope of the mountain. Here we see some wooden stairs. In red we see the slope that these stairs have with respect to the ground. And here we have a building that's leaning. In red we can see the degree of its slant or slope. You might be wondering at this moment, but what is a slope? According to the Webster's Online Dictionary, a slope is the upward or downward slant or inclination or degree of slant or the tangent of the angle made by a straight line with the x-axis. There are more definitions, but for us in math, these are the most important. This is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis. For us in math, the slope will be the rise over the run, or the difference in the y-coordinates divided by the difference in the x-coordinates. Here's our first example. Now we can see this left and right that I've written here, and that has to do with the left point versus the right point. We're going to be counting from the left to the right. Now how are we going to do this? We're going to trace an imaginary pathway, and what we're going to do is from the left point, we're going to count up one, two, three, four, so the rise was four, and from here we're going to one, two, three, we're going to run three, so our slope is four thirds. The rise is always the amount you either go up or down from the first point, and the run is always the amount you go to the right. Here's our next example. Remember, we're going to go from the left point to the right point. And I'm going to trace an imaginary pathway so we can see it. And we're going to go up one, two, three, four. So my rise is four. And from here, I'm going to run two. So my run is two. So our slope is 4 over 2. Now at this point, I'm often asked, well, if we were to reduce this, it would be 2 over 1. Would this be the same thing? It would be. And I'm going to show you right here, because if we were to rise to 1, 2, and then run 1, we can see that this point is still on the line. And if I were to rise to 1, 2, and then run 1, it's still on the same line. So they are equivalent as they are equivalent fractions. So they're the same thing. We're going to do the next example, and I'm going to check out the rise, but I observe that instead of rising, we are actually going to be going down. And we're going to go down 1, 2. So instead of rising, I'm going down 2, so I'm going to write a negative 2. And from here, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the right. The running is always to the right. So our slope here is negative 2 fifths. Notice that when the slope is negative, it tilts to the left, as this line has. Here I'm going to draw my little route that we're going to travel. And I observe that I'm going to rise 1, 2, so the rise is 2. And from here, I'm going to run 1, 2, 3, so the run is 3, so our slope is 2 thirds. I'm going to draw our pathway, and as we can see here, we are not going to rise, we're actually going to go down. We're going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4. 
So the rise is negative 4. And from here, we're going to run to the right. 1, 2, 3. So we're going to run 3. So our slope is negative 4 thirds. We'll trace our root right here. And we can see we're going to go down 1, 2. So my rise is negative 2. And from here, we're going to run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, like before, we can see that we can reduce this to negative 1 quarter. Let's check if it's the same thing. Well, if I were to go down 1 and then run 1, 2, 3, 4, we can see we have a point on the line. If we go down 1 and then run 1, 2, 3, 4, we see that they're the same thing. Remember that a slope that's reduced is the same in value. The points all lie on the same line. I'm going to draw our little path. And I'm going to count our rise. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we rise 4, and from here we run 1. So our slope is 4 over 1. We could also see it written as 4. It's the same thing, because we know that every whole number has a denominator of 1. Here we have a different situation. We don't have a rise. As you can see, this is not rising anywhere. Uh, so we have zero rise. All right, so my rise is zero. However, my run is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This situation is called zero slope. There is no slope. You can see that there is no hill-like slope at all. Now, how can we remember this is zero slope? Well, I'm going to show you a little trick. If you notice the Z and zero, do you see that these lines are going like this? Well, so is this line. Do you see? It's going this way. So zero slope is horizontal. So let's check out our rise. It's 1, 2, 3. So my rise is 3. But my run, well, there is no run. Both points are at 1. So I have a run of 0. Now, this is a problem because 3 over 0 is undefined. What do I mean by this? Well, if I were to take 10 and divide it by 2, I get 5. That's because 2 times 5 will always give me 10. However, with 0, there is no number that 0 can multiply by to give me 3. This is why it's called undefined. Now, another thing to remember this by, it's called no slope. How can we remember this? Well, the sticks in no also happen to go in a vertical fashion. So we can remember this is no slope. So I'm going to trace my pathway. And I'm going to rise 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I rise 5. And I'm going to run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So my slope is 5, 6. All right, I'm going to measure my path. Well, there is no path because there is no rise. So in this case, I'm not rising anywhere, so my 
rise is zero, but my run is one, two, three, four, five, six. And once again, this is going to be zero slope. How can we remember? Because the top part and the bottom part of zero go in the same direction as this line, horizontal. All right, here I'm rising one, two. But I'm not running anywhere. Both points are at negative 3. So I have 2 over 0. This is going to be no slope. How can we remember this? Remember, in no, we have lines that are vertical, just like our vertical line here. I'm going to trace our pathway. So I'm not rising, I'm going down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So my rise is negative 8, it doesn't rise. And I'm going to run 1, 2, 3, 4. If we were to reduce this, this would be negative 4 over 2, or even negative 2 over 1. We can see that all of these are the same. Let's look at the first one, negative 4 over 2. If I were to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, I see I have a point there, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, I have my second point. That's the same. If I were to reduce it further, well, at negative 2 and 1, well, let's go. Negative 1, 2, and 1. 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 This is a good reminder to know that equivalent fractions have the same slope. Let's review the different scenarios we can have. Over here, if we have a slope of 3 fifths and we start at this point, we would rise 3, 1, 2, 3, and we would run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our line would look like this. And because both numbers are positive, we have a positive slope. It goes to the right. In the second example, we start at the same point, but we're not going to rise 3. We're going to go down 3. 1, 2, 3, and we're going to run 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If we draw our line... we have a negative slope. In the next example, if we start at the same point, but we have a rise of 0, but we run 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, we have no rise, so we have a line like this, so we have zero slope. Remember that the letter Z can help us remember the horizontal line. And in the last example, if we start at the same point and we rise 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but we don't run because there's a run of zero, we have a vertical line. And remember, this is no slope. Just like the letters imply, there is a vertical line as well. Subscribe to my channel to get updates on new videos. And if you'd like me to create more, like and share with someone who might find this helpful. Thank you for watching and see you next time.